everyone, welcome back to the Goff House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Today we are gonna do a baking video. I am gonna show you how I make my German cheese Danish. Now, this is something that I've been making for many, many, many years, and I'm pretty sure it's how I snack my husband. So, if you need a husband and you have your eye on someone, you should make this Danish. <laughs> anyway, I'm doubling it making two because if my son sees this video and there is no Danish, he's going to have a fit. So, I'm gonna make one for our house and one for their house. Um, so when I'm doing this recipe, I'm doubling it, but I will put this recipe up on my blog at jennygoff.com and I will put the regular recipe up there. So you can go to that and print it off. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is put a cup of warm water in my bowl and I'm gonna put some yeast in here. So I'm gonna be putting four and a half teaspoons in here since I buy my yeast in this bigger container too. Three, four, and a half. So four and a half um, teaspoons of yeast will actually come out to the same amount as two small packages. So it would be one package per, per batch you're making. Now I have yeast everywhere, it's spilled out of my bag. I can't get in this kitchen without making a gosh darn mess, I'll tell you. It's never going to change. The yeast is getting low, too. I hope that the stores restock it soon. I really need to put this in a container instead of a messy bag here. Anyway, I'm going to sprinkle some sugar in here. I'm going to sprinkle a tablespoon first. And then I'm just going to let that sit and do its thing. Just stir it up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to wait 10 minutes. We'll be back. All right, it's nice and frothy and beautiful. It's what you're looking for. I'm going to start adding all the other stuff. I have two eggs I'm putting in, hopefully with no shells. <laughs> This is an egg dough and it's so good. Here we go. I'm gonna put in the other um, three tablespoons of sugar. One, sorry my arm's probably in your way. Two. Three. And I am adding two tablespoons of dry milk powder. I've got four tablespoons of melted butter. And bread flour. I am putting in four, one, two, three, three and a half cups. So here's two. And a half cups of bread flour and one teaspoon of salt. Gonna put my dough hook on and I'm gonna put it on one and start the mixing. This is one of those things that my family looks forward to on Christmas morning for breakfast and Thanksgiving morning for breakfast. Some, some Easter's also. If I have time, I'll make it for uh, brunch. Put it on two. I've got my oven light on. I turned it on about 15 minutes ago just to make sure it starts getting warm so I can put my bowl of dough in there to rise. So 
I'm gonna let this mixer go for five minutes. I'm gonna set my timer and I'll see you back in five minutes. All right, timer's going off. I'm gonna turn this off. This is going to be a stickier dough. This is not like a bread dough, so you're not gonna, um, you know, it's still gonna stick to the bottom. Pull this off. Okay, I have a well-oiled bowl. It's actually just covered in coconut oil. And I am just gonna take my dough and put it in here. Make it into a nice little ball here. Okay. I am just gonna cover this guy with a towel and I'm putting him in the oven with my light on one and a half to two hours. It's usually about one and a half. So, while that is rising, I need to clean this up. Maybe. I might bake some more today. I don't know what I'm doing. I think I'm, I'm, I'm up. I can't talk, I can tell you that. I might make a couple other loaves of bread, we'll see. I need to do white bread, and I just fed my starter over there. So I will be doing some sourdough bread today too. So I will see you back here in an hour and a half to two hours. These are some cherries I canned in 2017. Okay, it might have some dust on it. 2017. <laughs> this is my last jar of cherries. I need to do some more. These are just in syrup. I'm not gonna need, obviously, this whole jar for this recipe, so I will use this for something else, but I'm gonna go ahead and put them in. I'm gonna heat this up because I'm gonna thicken it with some cornstarch. So I'm gonna make a cornstarch slurry, and I'm gonna put, it does not gonna take much, I'm gonna put a teaspoon of cornstarch in some cold water. Cause I'll tell you what, this thing is up quick. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm gonna use this all, but this is a teaspoon, I'm gonna use half of it in a tablespoon of water. And I am going to drop in some almond extract, just a drop. Okay, I'm gonna thicken this up. I am gonna use the rest. <clears throat> okay, let's put the rest of my corn starch in there. And that'll do it. Okay, I'm gonna turn my heat off. I am going to drop just a stitch of almond extract into mine. Because I love that flavor. I'm gonna set this aside to cool off. Next thing I'm gonna do is separate my eggs. <clears throat> These are room temperature. Please make sure they're room temperature. They're much easier to separate and whip up this way. So I get all my egg white out. If you have an egg separator, you can use that. You can use your fingers, whatever you want. I just kind of use eggshells. Okay, put this in my mixer. I'm gonna get the whisk out. And we're gonna whip these up. I wanna whip these into a stiff meringue. So I'm gonna speed you up. <laughs> and give you some nice music so you don't have to listen to this platter. Mm. 
Okay. Stiff peak. I'm just gonna take it out of this bowl. And this is what I do. I use the same bowl, because otherwise you have to wash it in between. So I just whip the egg whites first and move them to another bowl. Either way you wanna do it, you gotta wash two bowls. In this bowl, oh man, I forgot my recipe. It's in my office. I hope I remember this by heart. <laughs> Okay, so I have two cream cheeses, room temperature. Trying to get these open is like the hardest thing for me. I don't even know why. <laughs> I always struggle. Okay. I've got four tablespoons of softened butter. I've got one cup of granulated sugar. I'm gonna zest a lemon in here. Now normally, because I've doubled this, I would be using the zest of two lemons, but I'm gonna do half lemon and half vanilla. Cause I can do whatever I want, man. <laughs> okay. And then I'm gonna put also a teaspoon of vanilla extract in. Now, put it back into the mixer. I'm just gonna use this whip again. And I'm gonna whip it, whip it good. Okay, here's the rest, the hand folding. I just wanna make sure all of that is mixed well. If your cream cheese is too cold, then you got lumps of cream cheese in here, and then it kind of messes up the filling. So I'm just gonna plop it all in there, our egg whites, and then we're just gonna fold, 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 This is a really beautiful filling. So delicious. Okay, I think that's good. I'm gonna separate this into two. Again, remember I'm doing two batches. To this batch, I am going to add some golden raisins. So I'm going to add about a tablespoon of golden raisins. Maybe a few more. I love these things. <laughs> I love raisins. I don't know, for some reason most people these days are like, raisins, no way. It's kind of an old fashioned thing maybe. But I love raisins. I put them in a lot of things. Okay, so it's not gonna be super raisiny. You might get a raisin or two per sheet. Okay. Got my two fillings. I'm gonna go grab a homemade pie filling to go with this one, and we're gonna get filling our pastries. Our dough has risen. And I went ahead and set my oven to 400 degrees. I pulled this out of the bowl, I cut it in half, and I needed it just a couple of times and then I'm gonna 
Move this one. And we want to roll this out till it's about a half inch thick. Preferably in a rectangle. Whether it really goes in a rectangle right now, we'll see. <laughs> Okay, that's my oven preheated. I'm just gonna let it run and set these, you know, next to it. <clears throat> so that they rise a little bit. Okay, half inch thick is what we're looking for. So that is about where we're at. We just need to be in a rectangle here. And believe me, don't worry if, they're, if, if it's not perfect. Mine rarely ever is. I can never shape anything perfect, but it always tastes amazing. Okay, so we want to do um, three to four inch squares. I'm not going to be that picky about it. I'm not measuring. If you're going to be making this for an event or something, I'd measure. <laughs> Most definitely. But for what we're doing here, no. And because this <laughs> this is smaller, I'm gonna have to just kind of eyeball it. Okay, that's good enough for me. I don't care. <laughs> also, not measuring. I have got my um, sheet lined with parchment paper. But I just pick up the dough, take a tablespoon of the filling, put it in, and just pull the corners out and, and tuck them in. It's, hard, it's easier to do over, like when it's sitting down. <laughs> I can make something look really difficult, huh? I really want to pinch these together a little bit. Yours will look better than this. I'm making these kind of small. This one only had three sides because it's the corner, but I'm gonna pull it up here. Okay, so mine are turning out tiny because I, um, cut a lot of squares out. You can make them as big or as little as you want. But I am going to be sending some of these to my son and he's got little kids. So my granddaughter's not going to sit and eat a huge pastry. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these done and when they are all done and um, when these are, I'm sorry, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these done. When they're done, I'm going to put a towel over them and let them sit for 30 minutes. When I'm ready to bake them off, we'll be back. Okay, so this is the next style I do. This is the one I do most of the time. I just make it in one big piece and then we cut it into pieces when we eat it. So. You roll your dough out into your rectangle or big flip-flop size and then this is the hard part for this. Um, we need to cut slices but not too far in. You don't want to cut into the middle. So I just kind of, <laughs> this isn't working real well. It's hard because it has um, the sides on it. I should have flipped it over upside down but that's okay. No big deal. I don't like to do them too um, close to the middle and I kind of try to fold the side up because then it holds the filling in a little bit better but still gives it this look. If you want to cut these thinner than thicker, by all means. 
they, I kind of cut them a little bit thick because when you pull them to to pull them over to the middle and tuck them, you kind of they kind of thin out a little bit. Okay, so that's one side done. And you should probably count. I'm guilty of not. <laughs> Let's see, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the middle. So one, two, three, four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, okay, so, get all my extra spoons out of here. This is what was left over in the bowl from the other, so I'm just going to put that down. Had to pull my lunch out of the oven. It's almost my lunch break, you know. <laughs> this is why you need a good base in the middle. Otherwise this stuff will leak everywhere. And it's still might leak everywhere. It happens. So, you can either do side by side or you can, I'm just gonna do it this way. Try to make it as even as you can. Then, the pie filling that we have. Just breathe my hair in. I take that and run it right down the middle. If you make these and you have a different way of doing them, um, or a traditional way, this is not the traditional way, I will tell you right now. But, this is my favorite way. And I kind of came up with this way from the traditional recipes. I kind of took it and ran with it. <laughs> so what I do is just fold this over and then I just start folding them in. You don't have to have a rhyme or reason. Oops. I fold them and cross them because it looks pretty. And this dough is a really, really yummy. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna cover it. We're gonna let it sit 30 minutes before we bake them off. All right, after 30 minutes, this is what it looks like. I have two beaten eggs. I'm just gonna start glazing this over. This is gonna be so delicious. Oh my gosh. I am gonna have a happy fam. Cause it's not even a holiday. <laughs> okay, so this is what I do. <clears throat> I take almonds, just sli plain slivered almonds, and I put them right over the top. Try to spread them out. Don't get them all in one spot like I just did. <laughs> 
Okay. So almonds, and then I like turbinado sugar. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I just think it looks pretty, and after you bake it and you take a bite of that crunchy turbinado sugar on top, oh my gosh, I love that. I am gonna go ahead and put this in the 400 degree oven. This one's gonna take longer than the little ones. So this one will take maybe 30 minutes or so. I'm gonna set my timer for 25 minutes and then keep watch. Okay, look how beautiful these little guys are. Those are stuck together. I can't help it, I'm not getting out another tray. You may wanna get out another tray. <laughs> I'm just kinda of being careless, I guess. But my grandkids aren't going to care that they're stuck together. Wow, that's... This is the thing. When they start um, getting, you know, like... I gotta close them back up. These guys want to open up. They like to open up after they plump. Reseal them. Oh, that guy fell open too. Oh, well, I'll leave that one open. You know, you can take your time and shape these much prettier. I didn't really pay attention to where I was cutting them. If I was going to take them somewhere as a dessert, I would. I probably should have for this video, but... They're delicious anyway. on there. I absolutely love the almonds on these. I don't care what flavor I put in them, almonds always go on the top. Um, but if you like pecans or walnuts, you could probably chop them really fine and sprinkle them on top. Okay. And then I'm going to sprinkle some sugar on these guys. The traditional recipe does not contain this turbinado sugar. So if you want to make it more traditional, you can leave that off. Okay, in the oven. <clears throat> these should take about 25 minutes. All right, these are out of the oven. These leaked a little bit. Well, they always do. Anyway, nice golden brown. Delicious. These took about 18 minutes. This one took about 23. I took it out about 23 minutes. So, but looks super delicious. I'm gonna let these cool completely and then we're gonna make the glaze to go over top. All right, we're gonna make a quick glaze. I have two cups of powdered sugar here. I'm gonna put about a half a teaspoon of almond extract in.
And then I've got two tablespoons of melted butter I'm putting in. Fresh and hot out of the microwave. And a couple tablespoons of milk. And of course, a pinch of sea salt. I'm just gonna whisk this together. We don't want a lot of glaze on the whole thing, so that's, this will be good for this, for both trays. Okay, so the glaze, really, you're just glazing a little bit, however you want to. Our other one. And you can eat these room temperature, but oddly enough, I love to refrigerate them because they taste like cheesecake. <laughs> These are done and they look beautiful. All right, that is all there is to it. It's pretty easy and super delicious. Your family is going to love it. This pastry is called Tuffin Golasha. You can fill it with any kind of filling you want, change it up. I know I don't always go by the original version, but this is a super delicious pastry. My family absolutely loves it. I've been making it for years and pretty sure that's how I got my husband. <laughs> also, I want to say it kind of goes along with the pantry items because I ended up using the cherries that I canned a couple of years ago. Um, so that was my last jar of cherries from 2017 and that's it for my cherries. I need to can some more. Um, so I'm not going to put this in that pantry challenge because it's a dessert, it's not a dinner. But you can still know that I did use a pantry item that I canned to make this. I think I, and I use so many of my pantry items even more than I think I do. Um, but we can what we love, right? If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot and I sure do appreciate your support. If you haven't started following me on Instagram, you should. I update my Instagram all the time. You always know what I'm up to that day. Instagram is JennyGoff18, also on Facebook. And you can visit my blog for all of my recipes at JennyGoff.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.